Hello, thank you for joining this professional development workshop on improving institutional research efficiency using R. We will discuss the multiple ways that R can be used to streamline our IR job tasks. Before we start, please find the slides for today's presentation on my GitHub page. This is the path to find the slides in the near workshop folder. I'm going to also click this link and copy and paste this link in our Zoom chat. In the chat, can anyone let me know if you're able to open the link and find the slides? Thank you. Let's begin our workshop now. We'll start with an introduction to R and R Studio. Then we'll dive into applications of R in IR for survey research, program review, data freezing, and web scraping. I won't talk about annual reports today, but we'll focus on iPads reporting with R at another near workshop on July 20. Welcome to sign up if you're interested. I'll pause for questions at the end of each section. We'll also have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Let me provide some context on how I found R to be helpful. I am an IR analyst at LaSalle University, a small private university in Massachusetts. As part of a two-person IR office, we handle tasks like survey, assessment, program evaluation, and external data reporting. Using R, I built reproducible codes that help me efficiently completing all the various tasks in IR. Now, let me share some tips on setting up R Studio to get us started. First of all, R and R Studio are two different things that people may be confused about. R is a programming language, a language that human use to talk to computers for statistical analysis. R is like the engine of a car, while R Studio is the dashboard to write and manage our R code. I have a tip for setting up the layout of R Studio. This is a screenshot of my R Studio interface. On the left side, I maximized the space for code writing and hided the rarely used tabs at the bottom. On the right side, the top is the console to display immediate output from the code you write on the left. The bottom is for viewing other types of output, such as plots and PDFs. The environment tab is useful for frequently checking and managing loaded data sets, which is often necessary. This setup allows you to focus on code writing on the left and easily check various of output on the right side. Another useful feature is the outline. You can find the outline feature in the top corner of your R script. The outline helps in quickly scanning different sections and code chunks. However, not all code chunks will appear in the outline, and this is determined by whether you named your code chunks. For example, the first code chunk is not named, and we can only find the second code chunk in our outline. It is thus, thus a good practice to always name your code chunk for easier navigation later. Along with that, I'd also encourage you to develop a habit of breaking down your R codes into separate code chunks. Ideally, each chunk accomplishes one small step of your analysis. This practice will greatly assist you in, deep, in the debugging process, allowing you to run code chunks individually and identify the source of any issues. Now, let's talk about shortcuts. Firstly, there is a convenient shortcut for creating new code chunks. Another useful shortcut is ability to collapse and expand section of code within your R file. This is particularly helpful when your file becomes large and cluttered. For example, when you need to focus on a specific section, 
you can collapse the other parts while still seeing their section titles for a high level overview of what comes before and after that section. This could greatly help the workflow and prevent feeling overwhelmed. Here is my final tip. Develop a source file, which is just a central repository for frequently used packages, functions, and some global settings. In other words, don't repeat yourself and save the codes you frequently use in this file. You can use the source function to call your source file by inserting this one yellow line of code at the beginning of your data project, you will reduce repetitive code configuration tasks. Here is an example of what I included in my source file. This is a list of packages that I need for almost every data project, such as libraries for data reading, data cleaning, data visualization, regressions, etc. I also included several functions I defined in the source file. For example, I added a customized theme for data visualization, and I can easily apply my preferred formatting across different projects. This source file does help me the coherence of my report and streamline the visualization workflow. Additionally, I specified some global configurations of the R environment. For example, I set echo equals to false to avoid printing out code snippet in my document output. I set include equals to false also as the default for all code chunks. And when I do want to include the results, I just specify include equals to true in the specific chunk. You can also set the format of the missing values and numbers in your source file. In conclusion, the source file promotes consistency, reduces repetition, and simplifies the process of code maintenance. You can regularly modify the source file, avoiding the need to modify each individual script. That's some personal tips of setting up our studio. Let's pause for a moment to see if there are any questions regarding what I presented up to this point before we dive into details about using R for survey research. <laughs> 